Hello and welcome. This is Michelle Christensen of One Noteworthy Life, and in this video, I'm going to give you 10 quick tips on how to organize a bunch of unorganized notes within OneNote. Now, I myself am an avid OneNote fan, and I use OneNote to keep just about everything in my life organized and moving forward. I'm a, one, I, I'm a YouTube creator, I'm a blogger at OneNoteworthyLife.com, and I host the OneNote Bullet Journal Facebook group. So this video is in response to a question I received on my website. I've edited it slightly, but the basic question was, I am setting up OneNote, and right now I have only one notebook with about 100 quick notes, and they are all unorganized. So before I give you the 10 tips, I want to lay out three principles to help you get started. So the first principle is to just start. You can adjust it later and you probably won't get your setup right on the first try. That brings me to my second principle, which is that OneNote is really flexible. You can move things around, copy paste, and generally rearrange them quite a bit. So the stakes are not high in getting set up right on your first try. My third principle is remember that you do have a search function. Try not to worry about getting your setup perfect or even losing things because you can find them through search. And in one of our tips, we'll touch on that. So before we can um, really start about how, start talking about how to organize your OneNote account, we want to let's talk about how your account is set up. So at the very top, you have your OneNote account. Within your OneNote account, you can have multiple notebooks, with, which is on this second row. Each notebook can have multiple sections, um, and then each section can have multiple pages. So that's your hierarchy. Your account, then you have notebooks. Notebooks have sections, sections have pages. So uh, let's move into the 10 tips. These are in no particular order, and just remember that there is um, no one right way to do it. So that brings me to tip number one, which is the most important tip I think I have to give you. It's do whatever works for you. No two people's lives are identical and no two people's brains are identical. So just do whatever works for you and realize it's probably going to look different from what works for someone else. So tip number two is consider keeping like with like. Um, what kinds of things do you use together? Uh, it's easiest to move within a section and then within a notebook, it's a little bit harder to go from notebook to notebook. Now, keeping this in mind, it makes sense to keep all the things you use together as closely um, together as you can in OneNote. Um, it is really easy, though, to move from notebook to notebook. So this is just sort of a general guide. Um, it's not hard at all to go from notebook to notebook. So, you know, it's just easier to stay within a section. So talking about moving around brings me to tip number three, which is to use links. Using links within OneNote, you can easily jump from place to place within your OneNote account. And a next level tip would be to make the link go in both directions. So you can jump from where you are now to the new place and then back again using a reverse link. Okay, tip number four. Consider separating the different areas of your life. So you might have work home, personal, volunteer work, studies, etc. I know I personally like to keep my work stuff separate from my personal stuff so that when I'm not working, I'm it's not even in my view. I don't think about it or anything. Conversely, when I am working, I like to not have my personal stuff staring me in the face. Um, number five, tip number five, is consider your privacy needs. Notebooks can be shared or kept private, so you might have a notebook that you want to share with someone. You know, for example, my uh, spouse and I share um, different notebooks, like uh, things with the dogs or the house or whatever. Other notebooks you might want to keep just for yourself, so um, that's a way to, cons you know, figure out if you want to keep a notebook separate or merge it into another notebook. Tip number six in organizing your notebooks is how much do you need to store for this particular area that you're talking about? Is it a few pages or a few hundred pages? If it's just a few pages, you might want to just put those pages in an existing notebook or section. Um, if it's hundreds of pages, that might warrant its own notebook so that you can organize those hundreds of pages. Tip number seven is to um, consider how you need to access this information. So for example, if you have a recipe notebook, 
you only need or even want that open when you're cooking or thinking about cooking or planning cooking or working on shopping lists. Uh, when you're not doing one of those things, that notebook can be closed. You don't need it. Now, if you have a personal planner notebook, um, which I do, and I, I call it my bullet journal, even though it's got like a lot of other stuff in it as well, that's open almost all the time. So I don't need to fill that personal planner notebook with a bunch of recipes as well when most of the time I'm not using or needing access to my recipes. Okay, tip number eight is the ability or need to close an archive. So when you're finished with a notebook, or at any time really, you can close it and then it doesn't show up on your active notebook dashboard. So when you're switching from notebook to notebook, you can just have the ones that you are currently open um, showing. And it just makes it easier to get around within your OneNote account. Now frequently, um, I do a lot of online courses and I usually create a notebook for each course because when the course is done, I can close the notebook and I keep my uh, information from the course, but the notebook itself doesn't show up in my everyday um, view of OneNote. So that's something to consider too. If this is a project with a finite end to it that you're going to want to close out later and not really have to look at every day, that might warrant putting that in a separate notebook. And again, keeping in mind that you can decide later that a bunch of data should go in its own notebook and move it there. So tip number nine is to search and use keywords. Um, the search function works great and you can use keywords for even better access. So um, you find your search function. So right now we're in my demo notebook. I'm right up here at the top left where it says demo notebook. And just so you understand what we're looking at, these uh, in the left column is all the sections of this notebook, and then these are the pages within this section. Um, so I'm going to demo this search for you. Um, I have hidden the word key, the phrase key lime pie in this section, so I'm going to show you how we use search to find it. Now I have already done this, so it's kind of uh, killing my big reveal there. But I'm going to first I'm going to show you that if you um, spell it wrong, it doesn't find it. So it doesn't find it at all. So now I'm going to spell it correctly, and it has found two instances of it. Um, and you can specify whether you want to search all notebooks, um, your current notebook, the current section, or the current page. So this first instance is the page we're on, which was tip number nine. Now I'm going to show you the other instance it found, which was the one I had hidden for this demo. So here's this page called Keyword Demo, and it says Key Lime Pie on it. Um, so this is great. It found it, but what if I need to know where it is? Well, I'm going to click here where it's uh, showing me the details of what I'm searching, and I'm going to click the drop-down menu next to All Notebooks. And it shows me that my current notebook is the Demo Notebook, which I knew because um, that's because I, I know where I put the keyword. So the current section is Digital Art, and the current page is called Keyword Demo. So I'm going to go to this section digital art and you can see right here this is a video I had filmed previously and then I just added a page to do my key lime pie demo so that's how search works um, often when I'm storing something in OneNote oh and it's highlighting key because it found that in my search when I'm storing something in OneNote um, especially if it's a screenshot or an image or something I will just add a type of line that says keywords and then just add a bunch of words that I think I might use later if I'm ever searching for that thing. Um, so if I was actually storing something relating to key lime pie, I might um, try like, you know, key lime pie, desserts, summer desserts, that kind of thing. Anything I think I might think about later when I'm searching for that term, that piece of information. Okay, my final tip is expand as you go. So just start with a page if, and then add as you need. Usually um, if I'm starting a new project and I don't know how much space I'm going to need, I will add a page to my personal like bullet journal no notebook. And then I might add a second and a third. And usually if I get to three pages, that's kind of a rough guideline I use that it probably needs to be in its own section within that notebook. And then if it starts to get really unwieldy, I might move it out of my personal notebook, my bullet journal, and move it into its own notebook. So just start with a page. You can move them around and then add pages as you need them. So I'm going to do a quick run through of all of those tips and then we'll wrap up. So tip number one, uh, do whatever works for you. Tip number two, store like with like. Three, make use of links. Four, separate the different areas of your life. Five, consider your privacy needs. 
6. Consider the volume of information you need to store on a particular subject. 7. Consider how you want to access information. 8. Consider if you may want to close an archive and notebook. Tip number 9. Use search and keywords. And tip number 10. Expand as you go. So that's it. Three principles for getting started with organizing your notes in OneNote and 10 tips to help you along the way. The most important thing I want to give you in this video is to just start. You can fix it later and if you're storing data in the Microsoft Cloud, you won't lose any data unless something goes wrong at Microsoft. So as I mentioned, I created this tutorial in response to a question that was submitted to me on my website. I love answering your questions. So if you do have any questions or comments or something you want to see in more detail, leave a comment in the comment section of this video and I will do my best to answer you. There will also be a link to my contact form in the comments of this video as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button so I know you like this. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.